we're now well equipped to being able to solve problems uh, in terms of solving triple integrals and spherical coordinates. Because in the previous video, right, we went over the first what spherical coordinates are. We went over how do we how do we construct a definition for the triple integral in spherical coordinates, which we saw is here using the triple integral of f of rho theta phi times rho squared sine phi d rho d theta d phi between all of our theta phi and rho bounds, right? And so now that we've seen this and Fubini's theorem, um, we've, we've seen all of these analogs now for spherical coordinates. Let's also learn how to actually use this definition and Fubini's theorem to solve the kinds of problems that we would like to solve. So let's start with an example. Let's first just calculate kind of the most simple, um, kind of the simplest integral we could possibly hope to calculate in spherical coordinates, which is rho squared sine phi, right? Because no matter what, we have this rho squared sine phi d theta or d rho d theta d phi. So basically we're looking at when f is the constant function one here, right? f of rho theta phi is just one. Um, and so let's look at this from rho goes from zero to one. Phi goes from zero to pi over two. And theta goes from zero to two pi. First, let's understand what this shape is. So well, also, let me finish writing the integral. D rho, d phi, d theta. What are we, all right, what are we integrating over here? So we have x, y, z. So rho goes from zero to one. So we, the farthest we can be out is one unit away from the origin in any given direction. Theta goes from zero to two pi. So we can sweep around the entire x, y plane. And then phi goes from zero to pi over two. And so remember that phi equals pi over two is the x, y plane. And so because of that, we're looking at an upper hemisphere of the unit sphere, right? Or a sphere of radius one. We're looking at the, um, looking at the triple integral over this region because rho is between zero and one, right? And so it can be anything between zero and one. And so it's like the solid, it's not the hemisphere, right? It's the, it's solid because rho is between zero and one. And so it's inclusive of the points between zero and one. It's not just the shell of the hemisphere, it's the entire, so it's like the upper half of a ball, right? And so this is what we're integrating over. And now let's actually take the integral. Um, integral with respect to rho, right? This is all still just integration that we've been used to. Um, for the last few videos now. Um, it's just our variables look different and they represent different things, right? But it's still standard integration. Sine phi is constant with respect to rho. So this integral is um, one third rho cubed sine phi from one to zero d phi d theta. Theta goes from zero to two pi, phi goes from zero to pi over two. And then if we plug in one for rho, we get one third sine phi. And then if we plug in zero, we get zero because sine of zero, or not sine of zero, excuse me, zero plugged in for rho is zero. So this is one third sine phi d phi d theta. Integral zero to two pi. And now we're integrating with respect to phi. And so this is going to give us negative one third cosine phi from pi over two to zero and then d theta, right? This is after we integrate with respect to phi. Well, this gives us theta goes from zero to two pi. Then if we plug in, so we'll get negative one third. We have cosine of phi or cosine of pi over two is zero. And then so we have zero minus one d theta. This gives us the integral 
from theta equals zero to two pi of one third d theta. Well, you can see this is one third theta from two pi zero, which is two pi over three. And so here's a first example of, and this would give us, what would this be giving us, right? If we're integrating the constant function one, right? Because we just have rho squared sine phi here. This integral actually gives us the volume of this upper half ball, like the solid, right? Everything contained in this. And so this is the volume. And so this would be like two pi over three units cubed. Right. And so here's an example of integrating um, in spherical coordinates just with for calculating volume. Right. We know there was no function here. So we're calculating volume of this specific region. And now let's look at integrating over general regions. Right. And so again, E can be a generalized region, like the triples rho theta phi, such that rho and theta are in some domain, right? So rho and theta, we have some domain down here. And then uh, phi can actually be functions of rho and theta. So we have like phi could be between u1 of rho theta and u2 of rho theta. Okay, and then once again, so what does this tell us? This tells us that the triple integral over some general region E is f of rho, triple integral f of rho theta phi dv. Well, this is the same as the double integral over this two dimensional region D times the integral where phi, not times, excuse me, of where phi goes from u1 of rho theta to u2 rho theta of f of rho theta phi d phi d a, right? And then so an example would be like, then, you know, your regions D can be type one, type two, and then you can do this in any sort of coordinate projection to get any combination of uh, these variables here. So like, let's just look at one example. So if D were to be points rho and theta, such that uh, rho is between two functions of theta, say G1 of theta and G2 of theta, and then theta is between two constants, alpha and beta, then the integral, so let's call this i back over here, say i equals this integral. Well, then i is the iterated integral of phi goes from u1 of rho theta to u2 of rho theta. Uh, then rho goes from g1 of theta to g2 of theta, and then theta goes from alpha to beta of f of rho theta phi rho squared sine phi d phi d rho d theta, right? And so this is just like one example of a possible setup for an integral over a generalized region, right? Remember, we could also have like maybe D is theta phi, and then we have that rho is between functions of theta and phi, and then you would get an analogous setup, and then G would depend, you know, this would then be theta and phi, and then you would have to look at like, well, is it type one or type two, and then you would set up the integral based on that. And so there's like maybe like five or six, I think, or maybe more even combinations of ways you could set up an integral over a generalized region. Um, and for spherical coordinates, I won't do any particular examples um, because to be honest, we won't see much of them. We will see some of them. Um, 
but it's still important for us to at least define and discuss it. Um, so let's do another example now of setting up triple integrals in spherical coordinates. So let's find the volume of region E bounded uh, by the cone Z equals square root three x squared plus y squared and the hemisphere z equals root four minus x squared minus y squared and so let's see what this region looks like first and then we can start to so when you're setting up an integral right well depending on whatever function you're integrating, or if you need to know volume, if we want volume, then we just integrate the constant function one. And so that means here to set up the integral, all we need are our bounds, right? And so let's first draw a picture to see if we can understand the bounds. So here's x, y, z. So I have a cone that looks something like this, right? We know this is a cone. And then we also have the hemisphere of radius two. Right? And so the region bounded by these is, again, it looks like a snow cone kind of, right? Where it's this cone, but with a spherical top which looks like a snow cone, if you will. And so we want the volume of this region. Well, to find the volume of this region, volume is going to be the triple integral of the constant function one, rho squared sine phi, and then d something, d something, d something, right? And we need to know our bounds in order to indicate an order for which we're going to integrate here. And so let's first start by looking at what we know here. Well, we see that, let's look at our height here, right? We can look at our height here because now instead of being in cylindrical coordinates, we don't describe this as a height. Basically, what we're doing is we're looking at, from the z-axis, these angles that we're making, right? And so we need to figure out what the angle of this cone is for, like, the base of this cone. And so this cone is given by z equals 3 root x squared plus y squared. And now we need to convert this to spherical coordinates. And so if we use our conversion formulas, we know that z was rho cosine phi at, sorry, this should be three inside the square root here, my bad. So root three x squared plus y squared, right? And so this is rho cosine phi equals root three times. And now what is x squared plus y squared? Well, let's look x squared plus y squared is equal to, what was x? x was rho cosine phi, or sorry, cosine theta, my bad. Cosine theta sine phi plus y was rho sine theta sine phi squared. And so this is rho squared cosine squared theta sine squared theta plus rho squared sine squared theta sine squared phi. And notice we have a rho squared sine squared phi in common. And what's left is cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, which is one. And so x squared plus y squared is then rho sine phi quantity squared. And so if we take 
So what do we have here? So we have row sine phi quantity squared. Well, this has been root three times root row sine phi quantity squared. Coming over here, we get that then row, sorry, let me fix that. We get that rho cosine phi equals root 3 rho sine phi. In other words, the rows cancel, and then we have tangent phi equals 1 over root 3. And here, you can use a unit circle or your already, like, previous knowledge from trig. You can get that phi is equal to pi over 6. And so that means this angle here... Let me use like red, this angle from the z-axis down to the base of this cone is an angle of pi over 6. And this helps us find our bounds for phi, right? Because where can we start? Well, the z-axis is included in this cone. And so we're starting from phi equals 0, and we're ending at phi equals pi over 6. This gives us our phi bounds just by using the equation of the cone and then expressing it in uh, spherical coordinates, right? So we've used one piece of information here about the cone. Let's use our next piece of information and know that um, we're dealing with a sphere of radius 2 or a hemisphere of radius 2, right? So when we have z equals root 4 minus x squared minus y squared. Well, this is to say that x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4. And we remember that our conversion formula states that x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals rho squared. And so this implies that rho squared equals 4, which tells me that rho equals 2. And so this is our next piece of information here right? We know the origin is included. So we can start at row equals zero. And then we're going out always at a constant two units, or we can go up to two units away from the origin in any direction, right? And so because of this, we see that row is between 0 and 2, right? And so we obtained that information from our second uh, bound that was given. And lastly, you'll notice this cone sweeps all the way around, right? We're looking at this in 360 degrees. And so because of that, right, there is no restriction on theta. So theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. And now we can set this integral up however we want. And so let's do D, because of Fubini's theorem, we can set this up in any order we want. Let's do rho phi theta. And so volume is D rho, D phi, D theta. And we're going rho is 0 to 2. Phi, we learned, was 0 to pi over 6. And theta is 0 to 2 pi. And this is a formula now for calculating the volume of this snow cone or this shape in here that's uh, bounded above by this hemisphere of radius 2 and bounded below by the cone at an angle of pi over 6. <clears throat> and so I won't actually calculate the volume and because we've now seen how to integrate this function before this row squared sine phi that was the previous example I did um, and but here for practice I would recommend that you write the rest of this integral out and and see what you get and now the last example I'd like to do is converting an integral from rectangular coordinates to spherical coordinates.
So let's uh, let's do that. Let's convert the following integral to spherical coordinates. And so the integral we're given is z goes from root x squared plus y squared to root 18 minus x squared minus y squared. Then we have x goes from 0 to root 9 minus y squared. And then y goes from 0 to 3 of the function x squared plus y squared plus z squared dz dx dy. OK? And well, first we can convert just the integrand, right? This part's easy. Here, we know that x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals rho squared. We also know that dz dx dy is equal to um, dv, which in spherical coordinates we learned is rho squared sine phi uh, d rho d theta d phi, right? And so converting the integrand is not bad. Now we need to convert the bounds. And so let's start with our z bounds, right? Those are the interior bounds here. And so we have z is between root x squared plus y squared and root 18 minus x squared minus y squared. Now, what we need to do is look at the lower bound for z. The lower bound is when z equals root x squared plus y squared. And this is when rho cosine phi equals root. And if you'll come back here, you'll remember that x squared plus y squared is equal to rho sine phi squared, right? And so this is equal to root rho sine phi quantity squared, which is to say rho cosine theta equals rho, or sorry, rho cosine phi equals rho sine phi, which is to say that tangent phi equals one, which is to say phi equals pi over four, right? So from our lower bound, we get that we have some bound of phi equals four, right? And now let's look at our upper bound. Our upper bound is z equals root 18 minus x squared minus y squared, right? Well, this is a sphere of radius root 18 because you get x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 18, which tells me that rho squared is 18 which tells me that rho is root 18, which is also 3 root 2. And so now this gives me, like, what is this giving, right? This is giving us upper bounds. Because phi equals 0 will be in, contained in our region, right? And the origin is contained in our region, which means 3 root 2 is going to be an upper bound because the lower bound will be rho. And so from the lower bound, what did we learn? We learned that phi is between 0 and pi over 4. And from the upper bound of z, right, then we learned that rho is between 0 and 3 root 2. Lastly, we need to look at what? We need to look at our remaining bounds. We have all this information was obtained just from the bounds on z, right? We also have bounds on x and y. And we need to fully understand these as well. And so x is going from 0 to root 9 minus y squared, 0 to root 9 minus y squared, y goes from 0 to 3. And so if we look at the upper bound for x, here we see that x squared plus y squared equals 9, right? But we are bounded below by x equals 0. And because we're bounded below by x equals 0, we have to stop 
at the y-axis, right? This is a circle, but we can we have y is going from zero to three, so y can't be negative, and x is bounded below by zero, so we can't be uh, negative in x either. And so because of that, what these two bounds are describing is this quarter circle of radius three. And what is the bound for theta then? Well, we start at zero, like theta equals zero, and we stop at the y-axis, which is theta equals pi over two. And so from this, we learned that theta is between zero and pi over two. And so now we've taken the information of our bounds to fully find information of, uh, so we've taken information of the bounds in rectangular coordinates, and now we fully describe the bounds in uh, spherical coordinates. And so what does this integral become, right? Let's, let's write this down here. So this is equal to, we have the triple integral. We had rho went from zero to three root two. We had theta goes from zero to pi over two, and then we had phi goes from zero to pi over four, right? Looking, observing the bounds in rectangular coordinates, these were all of the bounds that we uh, discovered. And then we changed the integrand as well. X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared is rho squared. And then DZ, DX, DY is rho squared sine phi. So we have rho to the fourth sine phi, right? The rho to the fourth coming, two of them coming from here, the other two coming from our differential, DV. So we have rho to the fourth sine phi, and then d rho, d theta, d phi. And now you'll notice this is a much, much, much easier integral to try to tackle in spherical coordinates, right? If you were to try to integrate this in rectangular coordinates, um, you wouldn't, or at least I wouldn't, get very far before I gave up and said, okay, I would rather spend the work doing these conversions so that the integration boils down to iterated integrals of calc one level difficulty. Um, so <clears throat> this gives us a pretty good introduction to triple integrals in spherical coordinates, as well as what we've seen in our standard Cartesian or rectangular coordinates and in a cylindrical coordinate system. Next, we're going to talk about um, like our last topic of integration before we uh, move on to the final topic of the course, which is vector calculus. Um, the last topic we'll talk about is using linear transformations, like learning what is a linear transformation? How does it alter a domain? Um, and we'll define the so-called Jacobian of a linear transformation or of a transformation in general to help us understand integration, like what happens to integration under a linear transformation. And maybe we can, in some domain, this integration is really difficult. We hit this domain with a linear transformation and then the integration becomes beautifully easy. Um, and so of course that has its own advantages. Um, so that's where we'll go from here. And this wraps up our talk on triple integrals in the varying coordinate systems.